program director, my dear sister Vanita, dearest Anisha and Priyesha, and the extended Godan family, the acting premier of our province, KwaZulu Natal, ministers and deputy ministers here present, members of the judiciary, the leadership of the South African National Defense Force and the South African Police Service, the leadership of the African National Congress, Pravin Gordon's party as led by the Secretary General, Fikir Mbalula, the leadership of the Alliance partners, COSATU and the SACP, and indeed the leadership of other political parties that are here present, religious leaders, traditional leaders, and leaders of various community-based organizations and comrades and friends. It was the poet Rabrinadrath Tagore who said, we come nearest to the great when we are great in humility. Today we bid farewell to a humble servant of our people, Pravin Jamnandas Godan. For all his achievements, despite his immense contribution to our country and to its people, Pravin was at all times a humble human being and activist. It was his humility as a person and as a leader that made him a great human being. It was his unwavering belief that a political activist must serve no other cause than the cause of freedom that made PG so exceptional. It is that which makes great all true servants of our people who are leaders. Leaders who accept the responsibility to lead with humility, with commitment, and with courage. They are leaders who also admit themselves and submit themselves to being led. These are leaders who speak up when they must, but who also listen to the voices of our people attentively. These are the leaders who are magnanimous in victory and gracious in defeat. Such leaders are people who stand up for what is right, even at great personal cost to themselves. That is who Pravin was. Pravin joined the struggle at a young age, as we have heard. He became active in the Natal Indian Congress and the South African Communist Party. The origins of his activism in student, in civic politics, was to define his political perspective and attitude. Even as a member of parliament, even as a minister, at his essence, PG remained a grassroots activist who, are, who was well, well versed in mobilization, in organizing people. He was one of those rare people who knew what the real cost of struggle was. His activism earned him arrests, beatings, and detentions. 
He knew the perils of underground work. As an operative of Operation Vula, he was interrogated, tortured, and thrown into solitary confinement, and then tried. Yet, whenever called upon, he stepped forward to always serve. PG is remembered as a key figure in the formation of the United Democratic Front. He's also remembered as a leader of the South African Communist Party structures and the African National Congress, his political home. He became known as a seasoned negotiator and astute tactician. I know this from the front seat row as I worked with him very closely during negotiations. He played an important role in our country's peaceful transition to democracy, contributing positively at all times without sacrificing any of his movement's principles. He was one of the architects in the end of our democratic constitution, both at a political level and at an organizing level, running the administration as well of the whole process. As a pharmacist, as a dedicated revolutionary, he may not have seemed the best choice to lead the South African Revenue Service. Because how do you mix tax and pharmaceuticals? <laughs> but in him we found an intelligent person who was steeped in enterprise and diligence that made him the perfect person to build one of the most important and effective institutions of our young democracy. It was these attributes that made him the right person to be appointed also the Minister of Finance at a time of great difficulty and challenge for our country during a global economy crisis. In every task that he was given, and in every portfolio he occupied, he was methodical and industrious. He understood the value of the work that he had been given. He understood that efficient revenue collection was essential for the fundamental transformation of our society. He understood also that careful management of public finances was vital for the education of our children and the health of our population. He knew that if the lives of the poor were ever to be improved, municipalities needed to work and to work well. He also knew that if unemployed South Africans where to find work, the country's trains needed to run and the ports needed to function properly. He knew that it's the power stations of ESCOM needed to produce enough electricity to drive a, stri a thriving economy. Always an activist, he did the work that needed to be done. And as an activist, he's a person who stood firm on principle and never sacrificed what he believed in. During one of the most painful chapters in our democratic history, as the state was being looted by the powerful and the connected, he chose to resist. Using all means at his disposal, he worked to thwart the capture of the state. Drawing on the substantial moral stature that he had, he refused to be silenced. He 
was prepared to confront those who had once been his own comrades, whom he had once looked up to as leaders, but who had abandoned the cause of our people. As many others looked away, his revolutionary consciousness demanded no less of him than to speak out, and speak out he did. For him, it was no different to when he joined the struggle against apartheid. It was a choice between what was right and what was wrong. It was a choice between standing with the people or standing against the people. There was never any doubt where Pravin Gordon stood. What gave him strength and encouragement was that he was not alone. Among his comrades, among activists, among civic leaders, among public servants, among broader society, was a growing movement against state capture in ways that history has yet to fully record. Pravin Gordon played a pivotal role in giving form and effect, yes, to the voices and to the movement that rose against state capture. This earned him the ire of the enablers of state capture. They hated him. They wanted to see him gone. It earned him the wrath of those more interested in political expediency than in undoing the great damage and harm that state capture had done. PG endured, as we have had, vicious personal attacks. These attacks were dishonest. They were disingenuous. They were condescending, and they were patronizing as well. Many of these attacks were also racist. And they were directed at one of our country's foremost champions of non-racialism. These attacks did nothing to diminish PG's standing amongst many South Africans. Instead, they exposed the moral bankruptcy of those who chose to target him and also to target his family. His family suffered immensely from the attacks that were leveled against them. It was shameful then, and it remains shameful even today. Let it never be that in the robust festival of ideas and vibrant public space that is the hallmark of our democracy, that we stoop so low to slander and be so dismissive of people who stand for the truth. Let it never be that in trying to portray ourselves as the liberators that we come to sound like the oppressor. It takes a person of true metal to withstand the onslaught that Praveen was subjected to. I had the privilege of working alongside him for many years during the struggle against apartheid at CODESA and in the Constitutional Assembly, in the ANC and in government. I will remember him fondly for having a very collaborative spirit of always being positive. I will remember him for his tact for his strategic thinking, especially 
also if one disagreed with him. I will remember him standing firm on principle and I will miss his incisive contributions in cabinet and in many other meetings in our party, the ANC. And I will miss our many discussions over many hours at my home, in offices, on the telephone, conversations that would go late into the night. I valued his frankness and his forthrightness on many issues. He was one of those who, as one engaged with, was always meticulous in his thinking, always well prepared for any topic that one engaged him on. And I respected his opinions, and I appreciate that he always afforded afforded me the same courtesy and he was a very good friend. There are a great many lessons one can draw from his life and from his political activism. The most fitting tribute we can pay Pravin is to reflect on our own actions, to consider what we can and should each do to serve our people better and our country better, to reflect, reflect on what it means to be an activist, for he was the quintessential activist, to consider if we are prepared to weather the great storms that so often confront acts of courage and integrity, these are the issues upon which we must indeed all reflect as we bid farewell to this great son of our country. It is in times of difficulty that moral courage is valued most. It is at times of renewal and rebuilding that activism is most needed. And this is the time of renewal and rebuilding. As we strive to rebuild our country, as the government of national unity, we will rely on men and women of integrity, men and women of honor and courage to account and to help shepherd our country in a new era and its people. Pravin Gordon's spear has fallen and it is now up to us to pick it up and take our country forward. I'd like to say to the Gordon family, the nation shares your sorrow at the loss of a husband, a father, a brother, a cousin, and an uncle. I'd like to thank you for affording me the opportunity to talk to him a few days before he departed from this world. He was lucid as I spoke to him on Tuesday after Anisha called me. I happened to be in Cape Town and she said, if you'd like to see him, come see him because he'll be gone soon. I couldn't be in Johannesburg, but I'm glad that you allowed me the opportunity to come and spend his last hours with him. And in a sense, I think he waited for me to come and see him before he departed. It is not lost on any of us that his dedication to our country demanded great personal sacrifice from you as a family. And to the friends and comrades and compatriots 
of our beloved departed comrade. Be comforted in the knowledge that his legacy continues to guide our every effort to build a free, just, and equal South Africa. What Pravin dedicated his life to is what we will continue doing so that we do not let him down. I leave you with the words from Rabbi Narath Togare once again, when he said, Give me the strength lightly to bear my joys and sorrows. Give me the strength to make my love fruitful in service. Give me the strength never to disown the poor or bend my knees before insolent might. Give me the strength to raise my mind high above daily trifles and give me the strength to surrender my strength to thy will with love. Come Praveen, you were all of these things. Yours was a life fruitful in service. You bore your sorrows with strength and dignity. You stood up for the poor and you never disowned them. You would not bend your knee before injustice. You would not bend your knee before those who were stealing from the poor. Where many tried to bring you down with their insults, your feet remained firmly on the high ground. And now you have surrendered your strength to the will of your creator. You were a much admired, much respected, and much loved comrade. You were a much loved colleague and a friend. Hamburgers.